Hello. We're going to start in a standing position in this class. All you really need is a yoga mat, but there's one pose where a strap is useful. If you don't have a strap, I'll offer you modifications, or you can use an old necktie or a long dishcloth, something like that. And there's a couple of poses where blocks are handy, but again, not essential. So come to a standing position. Have your feet hip distance apart. And have your take a look at your feet and see that they're parallel with each other, both going in the same direction. And now just gently rock over to one side and then the other. Just do this a couple of times and notice what happens to your weight and then come back to center. Have the weight evenly distributed between each foot and then roll forward and back, maybe lifting your toes and heels. And then again, find the middle of this where your weight is evenly distributed between the front and back and left and right. Bring your arms by your side. Palms can be out, but palms can be by your side. Lift your shoulders up and draw your, then draw your shoulders back. Maybe just circle your shoulders a couple of times. And so relax your body, but find the engagement. Find your body supporting itself from top to bottom without tensing any muscles. And breathe. This is Tadasana. So during this practice, I invite you to practice without any judgment. Be totally non-judgmental -judge to yourself as you come into each pose. If it's not going according to plan or how you'd like it to go, or if it doesn't look the way you want it to, step back and understand that maybe this is right where your body is right now. Also, if a pose is going really well, maybe enjoy it a little bit. That always feels good. But don't be attached to the outcome of the pose. Just practice. This is a process. Do the best you can. There's a lovely quote by Rumi. He says, out beyond ideas of right doing and wrong doing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. So just practice for the sake of practicing, no judgment, and enjoy. So keeping your feet right where they are, as you inhale, reach your arms up over your head. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart and release. Do this a few times, inhaling arms up. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart and release. Inhale up and exhale down. Keep going. And release. Now on the next pose, you can stay right where you are. I'm just gonna turn so you can see what I'm doing. On an inhale, reach your arms up over your head. This time, as you exhale, bend your knees slightly, keep your spine straight, send your hips back, lead with your chest, and fold forward. Don't worry, worry if your hands touch the mat or not. Inhale halfway up. Nice straight back, shoulders back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach your arms out to the side, come all the way to standing. Hands to your heart and release. Inhale, lift your arms. Exhale, fold forward. Bend your knees rather than your spine. Inhale, halfway up. And exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way to standing. Exhale, hands to your heart and release. This time, reach your arms up over your head. As you exhale, fold forward. Breathe here. Let the weight of your head, your shoulders, melt towards the mat. If your hands are nowhere near the mat, you can cross your arms and let your elbows dangle. Or you can also rest your forearms on your thighs. For some people, this really helps if you have any tenderness in your lower back. And breathe. Inhale, reach your arms out to the side. Come all the way to standing, arms up over your head. 
hands to your heart and release. Inhale, lift and exhale, fold. Inhale, reach your arms out to the side, all the way to standing, arms up over your head, hands to your heart, and release. So we'll do some breaths of joy. What they involve is three inhales through your nose, three short inhales. They sound like this, and your arms follow the breath. It looks like this. And then bend your knees as much as you need to, and then on an exhale, hinge at the hips and fold forward, exhaling through the mouth and let it go. <sighs> like that. So we'll do it all together and it all comes together. Come to a standing. Inhale through your nose, lifting your arms up to the sides. Again, over your head, exhale, fold. <sighs> and come on up. One more time. Exhale, fold. And let it out. And let the weight of your upper body melt again towards the mat. Bring your arms out to the side on your next inhale, all the way to standing. Lift your arms up over your head. Hands to your heart. And release. Take your feet slightly wider than hip distance apart, or keep them where they are. I like it a little wider. Inhaling, reach your arms up over your head. With your left hand, hold your right wrist. Let your hips roll to the right, hands to the left. Now, this is if this is not comfortable, an option here, this isn't even the pose I was thinking of for the strap, but an option here is just to use a strap and have your hands wider. You can do it this way too. And just breathe into the stretch. Try to keep your weight evenly distributed between both foot. Draw that right elbow back. Back to center and switch sides. Right hand on left wrist or hold the strap. Reach your left arm up. Let your hips roll to the left and bring your hands to the right. And draw that left elbow and shoulder back. And breathe. Back to center and release your arms. Bring your feet in a little closer, roughly hip distance apart. So when I say hip distance apart, fill your hip bones and then make a straight line from your hip bones down to roughly your middle toe. And that's hip, hip distance apart. Start with your hands on your hips. You can stay right where you are, but I'll show you the side view. Bend your knees, but if your knees are going forward, as they often will, Send your hips back and sit down in an imaginary chair. And now sit up nice and tall. Toes are soft. Maybe sit deeper. Option to bring your palms together at your chest or keep them on your side or reach your arms out front. If their arms are out front, draw your shoulders back. Toes are soft. Maybe deepen the pose. Remember, don't judge where you are. Just do the best you can. And now energetically, hug the ankles and knees together. Really squeeze them. Breathe. And now push the ankles and knees away from each other. Take a couple more breaths. Hang in there. And on your next exhale, fold forward and breathe let it go hands might rest on the mat if you have blocks handy another option is to place your hands on the blocks or cross your arms or forearms on thighs and breathe let go do what you can 
But always pay attention to how each pose feels in your body. If you have any discomfort in the joints, back off from the pose. If it's a muscular discomfort from effort, well, that's another thing you could push past or respect. Release your arms if they're crossed and make your way onto your knees. Come onto your hands and knees. Wrists directly below your shoulders, knees directly below your hips. If this is too hard on your wrist, you can walk your hands forward an inch or so. And if you need more padding for your knees, you can either roll up the back of your mat and put your knees on the extra or place a blanket for your knees. On an inhale, arch your back, lower your chest, your belly towards the mat. Really tilt your pelvis and look up. Exhale, round your back. Reach your spine towards the ceiling. Let your hips and head lower towards the mat. As you inhale, arch. And exhale, round. Use your breath to determine the pace of the movement here. And if a position feels particularly good that your body just loves, just hang out there for a breath or two. And when you next come through a flat back, a neutral spine, pause here. Stay where you are, and I'll just show you from the side. Let your hips roll to the right, and let them hang out here. Maybe moving forward or back. Finding just the right angle where your body gets the best stretch. Just breathe through this. And then back to center and let the hips roll over to the other side. Again, moving forward or back to find just the right stretch for your hips, your body. Breathe here and just hang out. And back to center. Now walk your hands forward and come right onto your belly. Have your hands directly below your shoulders, elbows together. Toes are pointed, the tops of your feet are on the mat. Feet are about hip distance apart or closer. Look straight ahead. And having your hands only lightly on the mat, so you're not really using your hands much to lift up. Lift your chest forward and up. Energetically crawl the mat back with your hands, pushing your chest forward. Keep that lower rib cage on the mat for this pose. This really, that really protects your lower back. Breathe here. Feet, tops of the feet on the mat. This is Cobra Pose or Bhujangasana. Maybe lift a little more. And then lower down. Now place your elbows roughly where your um, hands just were. So if your elbows are too close to you, it can bother your lower back. It can, if it pinches your lower back, walk your arms forward until your lower back is happy. And now send your chest forward, shoulders back. And breathe, looking straight ahead. We'll be here for a few breaths. Just breathe into this. Shoulders back. And one more breath. And then lower all the way down to the ground. Place your hands under your shoulders, tuck your toes. And press your knees into the mat as you lift up through tabletop. Walk your knees forward. Tuck your toes, lift your knees up off the mat, and walk your feet forward to your hands. 
and fold forward. On your next inhale, arms out to the side, all the way to standing, reach your arms up over your head, palms together at your heart, and release. So come onto the front of your mat, feet hip distance apart, step your right foot straight back behind you, hands on hips, still facing the front of your mat, bend your left knee. Check in with your left knee, take a look at it, and see that it's pointing the same direction as your left foot. Otherwise, adjust the angle of your foot so that they're in alignment. On an inhale, reach your arms up over your head. Shoulders stay soft away from your ears and breathe. Now lower both hands to either side of the left foot. Step your right foot back as far as you can and lower that, sorry, step your right foot back and lower your right knee to the mat. Send both hips forward here. If you don't have blocks, keep your hands on the mat if you want to use blocks and you have them. You can place your hands on blocks. And take a look at the left knee and foot. You want the knee above the ankle or behind the ankle. You do not want it up front here for this pose. So if it's past your ankle, walk your right knee back a bit. And now breathe into the pose. Send both hips forward. Now take the blocks with you. Walk your hands back and aim to straighten the left leg. It may or may not straighten, but really draw that left hip back. See if you can straighten that left leg and then flex those left toes. Pull them towards you. You may have found the hamstring. Can you bring the toes back anymore? And walk your hands or blocks forward, bending the left knee. And now keep the blocks handy, but just move them to the side for a sec. Bring both hands to the inside of the left foot. So stay where you are and I'll just show you from the other side. So we'd been like this and now both hands are to the inside of the left foot. Hug that left knee to the left shoulder. Breathe. Still sending both hips forward. Bend your elbows and see if you can lower your shoulders towards the mat. Hug that left knee to the left shoulder. Press into the big toe mound. Press into the mat with the big toe mound. Option to maybe your elbows will find the mat. And if they don't, you can either just continue bending them or placing your forearms on a block. But hug that knee to the shoulder. One more breath and come on back up. Now, pivot on the heel, lift the toes up, come back a bit so you can see. Lift the toes up and turn pivot on the heel and send the toes out to the side. So now the left knee is pointing out to the left. And from here, I'll show you on an angle. Toes are out, you're still, your body's facing forward. Roll onto the baby toe side of the foot. So the big toe side will lift, bend your elbows, and gently lower your shoulders down. Either staying here, maybe both your elbows will find the mat, and if they don't, either stay doing what you were doing or any version. You can even just stay here, bending your elbows and breathe. One more breath. Place both hands on the mat, lower your left foot to the mat, bring the left foot forward. So the left foot is now parallel to the length of the mat. Bring your left arm to the outside of the left foot. Tuck your right toes under and lift the right knee off the mat. Step the right foot forward, maybe five or six inches, and then over to the right a bit. 
On an inhale, reach your arms up over your head, keeping the left knee bent. Lower both arms and step the right foot forward to meet the left. And we'll do the other side. On an inhale, reach your arms up over your head. As you exhale, hinging at the hips, knees are soft or slightly bent, fold forward. Breathe here. If you found the last side challenging, you may find this side easier or harder. But just remember, no judgment on what's happening. Just try your best. Push yourself a little bit. But be kind. Do it with compassion. Do it without judgment. Place both hands on the mat and now step your left foot straight back behind you as far as you can go and lower that left knee to the mat. Send both hips forward and again right knee above or behind the ankle and if the right knee is too far forward step the left knee back and if you need more padding you can put your towel or blanket under your left knee or just roll up the side of the left knee. Roll up your mat and double it up for the left knee. Send both hips forward and breathe. Hands either on the mat or placing them on blocks. Your choice. Now walk your hands back towards your left knee and your hips. Draw that right hip back. Flex those right toes towards you, aiming to straighten the right leg. Breathe. Flex those toes towards you. There's your hamstring. Bend your right knee, lower the right foot to the mat, and walk your hands forward. Bring both hands to the inside of the right foot. And again, I'll show you from the front. Stay where you are. So your right foot is flat on the mat. Press into the big toe mount. Hug that right knee to the right shoulder, either staying here or bend your elbows and lower your shoulders towards the mat or placing your elbows in blocks maybe right onto the mat. Hug that right knee to the right shoulder. Really press it in. Still sending your hips forward. Breathe here. Can you relax a little more deeply into the pose? Press that right knee to the right shoulder. And then place your hands on the mat. Come on back up. And keeping your hands where they are, lift your right toes up off the mat, pivot on the heel, and turn the right toes out to the right. So it looks like this from the front. Lift the toes up, turn the toes out, and lower the foot back down. And now roll onto the baby toe side of the foot. I'll try to, it looks like this. That's how the foot looks like. And now, Bend your elbows and lower your shoulders towards the mat, still sending the hips forward. Forearms can rest on blocks, maybe on the mat. Just try to breathe into this. Can you let go a little more? Breathe. One more breath. Come on to your hands. Pivot on your heel and bring the toes in, lowering the right foot to the mat. Now tuck the left toes under. Lift the left knee up off the mat and step the left foot forward five or six inches and over to the left. Hands on either side of the right foot. Look straight ahead. And on an inhale, reach your arms up over the head. Still bending your right knee, maybe deepening the lunge. 
And breathe here. Find your breath. Practice without judgment. Do your best. But accept what's happening today. Lower your arms and step your left foot forward to meet your right. Whoops. <laughs> I will practice without judgment when things don't go perfectly. Inhale, reach your arms up over your head. Soften your knees. And as you exhale, fold. On your next inhale, arms out to the side. Come on to standing, arms up over your head. Palms together at your heart. And release. Turn and face the side of your mat so you can take a nice wide stance. An approximate measurement of where you want your feet or your ankles would be directly below your wrists if you put your arms out to the side. But your feet can be a little bit narrower, a little bit wider, but this is a good optimal place to start. Pivot on your right heel, turn your right toes out so your right foot is parallel to the length of your mat. Start with your hands on your hips and bend your right knee. Keep your shoulders and hips um, vertical from each other. So they're in a straight line. Now turn and look over your right knee. Adjust your right foot so your knee and foot are both pointed in the same direction. And now bring your arms out to the side, shoulders soft away from your ears. You can even draw your shoulder blades together. And turn and look over your right hand. Just breathe. In Warrior Two, Virabhadrasana Two or Parshva Virabhadrasana, side warrior. Can you go deeper? Or stay where you are. Really press the, that left foot into the mat. For a little more engagement, you can hug the feet together. Maybe this is plenty already. Lower your arms and straighten your right leg. So the legs are straight, but there's a micro bend in the knees. Engage the muscles. If you can't engage the muscles, just unlock your knees just slightly, but have them appear almost straight. Bring your arms out to the side, palms facing forward. Turn and look over your right hand, keeping your legs, both legs straight. Hinge at the hips and try to touch the wall in front of you with your right hand. Keep space in that right side. Draw that left shoulder back. Go as far as you can. And then lower your right arm down. Option to lift your left hand up. If this bothers your left shoulder, rest your left hand on your left hip. But either way, draw that left shoulder back. In Trikonasana. Triangle pose. And breathe. One more breath. Come on up to standing and lower your arms. Pivot on your right heel, bring your right toes in. Feet are parallel again. Hands on hips. Take a deep inhale to re lengthen your spine. Lift your crown of your head as tall as you can. As you exhale, keep that your spine straight. Hinge at the hips and lean forward. If your back starts to round, just come up a bit till it's straight, or you can bend your knees slightly here. But I would just come up a bit to keep a straight spine. You can stay here. This may be plenty. Or reach your arms out to the side, palms facing down. Or if you'd like a little more engagement, reach your arms out front. Or they can stay at the side or hands on hips. Honor wherever you are in your practice today. And now wherever your arms are, on your next breath, fold forward, release your hands and place your hands on the mat. Or if your hands are not reaching the mat, you can either place them on a block 
Or sometimes it feels good to cross your arms and let your elbows dangle. Just let go. Take a couple of breaths here. Release your hands, place your hands on your hips and make your way up to standing again. Now pivot on your left heel, turn your left toes out. So your left foot is parallel to the length of your mat, your right foot stays where it is. Hands on hips, keep your shoulders directly above your hips and bend your left knee. Turn and look over your left knee. Your thigh should be pointing in the same direction as your left foot. And be sure your knee is above your ankle. If it's past your knees or past your toes or ankle, slide your right foot back. Open that right shoulder back. On an inhale, reach your arms out to the side. Turn your gaze and look past your left fingers. Shoulders are soft. If you want a little more engagement, squeeze your feet together. Make sure your right foot is flat on the mat. You can draw your shoulder blades together. Shoulders soft away from your ears. Find your breath. Maybe deepen the pose, deepen the lunge. Lower your arms and straighten your left leg. Keeping your feet right where they are, bring your arms out to the side, palms facing forward. Turn and look over your left hand. You're hinging at the hip, so you can even place your left fingers on your left hip crease. And then reach forward with your left hand. Go as far as you can. Keep that left leg straight or almost straight without locking the knee. When you've gone as far as you can, lower your left arm down and reach your right arm up in Trikonasana. Or right hand can rest on right hip to protect the shoulder. But draw that right shoulder back. And breathe. Don't worry about what your triangle looks like. I find each, all the poses, everybody looks a little different in them, but triangle people can look quite different. Some people will be up here Maybe up here, don't worry about it. Do what you can. Some people like to place their lower hand on a block or it can rest wherever it hovers. One more breath. Come on up to standing and lower your arms. Pivot on your left heel and bring your left toes in. On an inhale, reach your arms up over your head. As you exhale, hinge at the hips, lead with the chest and fold forward. Hands may reach the mat or cross the arms, let the elbows and head dangle. Just breathe. Can you let go a little bit more? On your next inhale, reach your arms out to the side. Come all the way to standing. Lift your arms up over your head. Hands to your heart. And release. Walk your feet together. And we'll do a couple of balancing poses. So press your right foot into the mat. Keep the right knee slightly soft. With your hands on your hips, come onto the toes of the left foot and turn the left knee out to the side. Focus your gaze somewhere on a spot on the wall or maybe the floor in front of you. Or if you have a window, it helps to look at a tree. Look at the trunk, something that's not moving. And slide the sole of the left foot to the right ankle. Option to stay right here. We're already in tree pose. Keep that right knee soft. Make sure that right knee is not locked. Either stay here or place the sole of the left foot and press it into your right calf. Or if you're able to, 
press it into the inner thigh, but if you can't make it to the inner thigh, avoid the knee and come back to the calf. Arms can stay where they are. Bring your palms together. Or maybe reach your arms up over your head. If you come out of it, just try again. And breathe. Steady your gaze. And lower your arms. And release your left foot. And now press your left foot deeply into the mat. Left knee slightly bent. Start with your hands on your hips. And come onto the toes of your right foot. Turn your right knee out to the side. And slide the sole of the right foot to the left ankle. Either staying here or pressing the right foot into the left calf or the inner thigh. Option to bring your hands to your heart or maybe reach your arms up over your head. Find your breath. If it's a windy day in tree pose, just keep, try again. And lower your arms and release your foot. Just walk your feet out for a sec. So we're coming into Eagle Pose, Garudasana. Bring your arms in an L-shaped position, palms facing each other, elbows about the same height as the shoulders. Bring your elbows and palms together. Now lower your left elbow and cross it under your right. The backs of your hands might be together here. Now turn your palms and clasp your hands together. If you have any <coughs> shoulder injuries or sensitivities, you can just cross your elbows and keep your hands on your shoulders, lifting your elbows up and down, maybe bringing your elbows forward. Or hands together, lift your elbows up and down, move your forearms away from your face, maybe press your elbows forward, move however feels best for you to get a nice stretch. Now press your right foot into the mat and cross your left leg in front of your right, reaching the left toes to the outside of the right foot. You're welcome to stay right here and fold forward. Or if you'd like to make this a balancing pose, tuck your left toes behind you, bend your right knee, your standing leg, and fold forward. And breathe in Garudasana. Slowly make your way back up, uncross your legs, uncross your arms, and just circle your shoulders up and back. And then the other direction. And now come back to cactus arms, or L-shaped arms. Bring your elbows and hands together. Lower your right elbow under your left. Backs of your hands will find each other. And now turn your palms together clasping your hands. You can stay here, or if this bothers your shoulder on this side, you remember you always have this option, hands on shoulders. You can press your elbows forward away from you, or lift your elbows up and down, hands away from you, even side to side a little bit. And now press down in your left foot, onto the toes of your right foot and cross your right foot in front, resting your right toes on the mat on the outside of your left foot. Either staying here or bending your standing knee slightly and tuck your right toes behind you. Bend your leg and fold forward. And breathe. Slowly come on back up, uncross your legs, uncross your arms, and circle your shoulders. Go both directions. Come on to the front of your mat. On an inhale, reach your arms up over your head. 
Exhaling, fold forward. Breathe. Can you fold forward a little bit more? Try to keep your back straight, so bend your knees, not your spine. Breathe. Place both hands on the mat and lower onto your knees. Now take your knees as wide as the mat. So your knees will be wide. And now bring your toes together so your toes are touching. And slowly lower your hips to your heels. Reach your arms out front and invite your forehead towards the mat. If it does not reach the mat, you can either cross your arms, rest your forehead on your forearms, or stack two fists, or use a block and rest your forehead. Or you might be very happy with your head dangling. But just breathe here, let go. Lower your hips towards your heels. And let go. One more breath. Lift your hips up over your knees. Slide your knees together. Come to a seated position with your legs out front. Now have a strap handy, or I will offer you an option without the strap. And roll onto your back. Bring your feet hip distance apart. Arms by your side. Knees are bent, so your spine is flat into the mat. Press into your big toe mounds. Keep your knees hip distance apart or closer. And gently lift your hips up off the mat. And then slowly lower down. You can lift your hips up a little higher, keeping your knees mostly together or parallel. So press into the big toes and slowly lower down. A couple more times, lifting your hips up off the mat. If you can do this comfortably, now open your chest and walk your shoulder blades together. Maybe option to reach your fingertips together, clasping your fingers, or stay where you are. And then slowly lower down. Release your shoulders and gently hug your knees to your chest. Let's rock side to side. If you have your knees slightly away from your chest, you get a nice massage on your lower back. If you feel like lifting your hips up, you can hug your knees closer. And lower your feet to the mat. And if you have a strap, keep it by your side and grab your strap. If you don't, okay, straighten, everybody straighten your left leg and bend your right leg. If you don't have a strap, reach behind your right thigh and straighten your leg. You might be down here, but then pull it towards you with your hands reaching around the back, flexing that foot. If you do have a strap, or the other option, if you can reach your big toe, grab your big toe with your first two fingers and straighten it, that's another option. But keep that left leg flat on the mat. Or take a strap and place it around the arch of the foot. Take the strap as long as you need and lower the foot till that leg is straight. Both legs are straight. Flex the left toes towards you and now flex the right toes towards you. Slowly, using the strap or your arms or your fingers, if they're around the toe, lift your right foot up. You can hold the strap in two hands or you can hold it in your right hand. Keep pressing that left knee into the mat. Breathe here. Can you lift it up any higher? And then lower your right foot to the mat. If you're using a strap, place both feet in the mat 
and straighten your right leg and now the strap is in your left leg left foot otherwise if you're using your hands now grab the back of your left thigh or grab your toes with your fingers in your left hand so straighten your right leg flex the right toes towards you and now straighten the left leg lower it as much as you need to to straighten that leg and then the strap either in two hands or one lift that left foot up towards you flex that left foot keep the leg straight and breathe You're pulling a little bit, but it's more passive encouragement. Don't overdo it. Find the edge. You'll know when you've met it. And then stop there. But invite it just a little bit more, a millimeter more. And then rest. One more breath. And lower the left foot to the mat. And again, hug your knees to your chest. And rock side to side. Come on back to center. Now take your knees away from each other. So it's like this, feet together. On with your hands, go between your knees and grab the outside of each foot. If your hands are nowhere near your feet, you can use a strap and place it around both feet and pull the strap towards you. Otherwise, uh, grab the feet, bring them together Pull your feet towards you. And if your elbows are where anywhere near your knees, push your knees away from you. Breathe. Continue drawing the feet towards you, pushing the knees away from you with your elbows. Find your breath. release your feet and lower your feet towards the mat now for this next pose if you have a block handy use your block otherwise take a towel or blanket and roll uh, roll it up so it's about I don't know four or five inches wide and bend your knees keep your feet flat on the mat he feet hip distance apart and if you're not using any, this is just a really nice resting pose. You can, not using any props, you can rest your hands by your side. If you're not using props, hands by your side, feet hip distance apart, and tent the knees and bring them together. This is a lovely option right here. Otherwise, grab the block, bring your feet hip distance apart, so bring your feet in closer together. Lift your hips up and slide the block or the blanket and place it on right under your hips. Avoid the lower back, so keep it, so you're almost sitting on it, but on your hips. Now open your chest, bring your shoulder blades together. Arms by your side, palms facing up. And supported bridge. Breathe. Think about opening your chest and everybody walk your shoulder blades together, in whatever version you're doing. A couple more breaths. And now if you've got a blanket or block under your hips, just lift your hips up just enough to remove your prop. And if your feet are wide and your knees are tented, bring your feet together and gently hug your knees together and rock side to side. Now take your hands and reach behind your knees and roll along your spine a couple of times and then come all the way up to a seated position 
Bring the soles of your feet together and then let your knees open wide. Keep your spine nice and straight. So from the side, it looks like this. So if your back is rounding a lot, bring your hands behind you and then send your chest forward. Keep your spine straight and you can use your hands to push your chest forward. If it's an option for you, reach forward and grab your ankles. <laughs> Keeping your spine straight, reach forward with your chest. If your elbows are anywhere near your knees, use your elbows and push your knees away from each other. This is seated Baddha Konasana. We did this on our backs. It's another variation of the same pose. Try to let go. If this is a challenging pose, even if this is an easy pose, practice without judgment. Just let go. Accept where you are in your practice today. The more we practice, the easier this gets. And breathe. And then come on up and straighten your right leg. Bring the sole of your left foot, bending the left knee, bring the sole of the left foot <coughs> to your right inner thigh near your hips. You can either stay here or cross your left foot over the right and place it on the mat so it looks like this. And now take your left hand and cross it over your left leg, grabbing your shin, ankle, maybe the bottom of your foot. Lengthen your spine as you inhale and as you exhale, twist to the right and turn and look behind your right shoulder. Breathe here. This is a simple twist. Make your way back to center and uncross your legs. Now start with your knees bent, feet flat on the floor and reach, let your whole torso and chest rest on your thighs. With your hands, reach behind and grab the backs of your knees. Now look straight ahead and slowly slide one heel forward a little bit, keeping the contact with your upper body and thighs. And now walk your feet forward a little bit more. Keep those feet flexed towards you. Maybe straighten them completely, flex those toes towards you. Eventually you may you lose the contact. But now press the knees into the mat and pull the feet towards you, flexing the feet. You can either grab your toes or you can just walk your hands forward. You don't need anything. But some people like to use a strap and pull the strap towards you as you lean forward. One more breath. And come on back up. And now bend your right leg and place the right foot on the mat to the inside of the left foot. Looks like this. And now cross the right foot over the left. And with your right hand, reach over the right knee and grab the right ankle, maybe the arch of the foot. Press that right foot deeply into the mat. Lengthen your spine on an inhale. As you exhale, twist to the left and turn and look over your left shoulder. Breathe. Try to relax into the twist, don't force it. And then come on back to center, uncross your legs. If, you're, if you want a sweater or a blanket for Shavasana, keep it handy now. We have one more pose before we come into our final resting pose, Shavasana. So knees bent, feet flat on the floor, slide your hips to your heels, and come onto your back. 
place your hands on the mat away from your body so they're in a T position. Slide your hips over to the right and now let your knees roll to the left and now turn your gaze and look over your right hand. Begin to relax into the pose. If you wish, you can close your eyes here. Gently bring your knees back to center. And now slide your hips over to the left, letting your knees roll to the right. And now turn your gaze and look over your left arm. Can you let go of any tension in your body? Gently bring your knees back to center. Get your sweater or blanket or whatever you want for Shavasana. I'll bring you into Shavasana on your mat, but I'll be in a seated position. So just lay on your mat with your blanket or sweater, maybe eye pillow, whatever you're using, and straighten your legs. Feet can be a little wider than hip distance apart. Arms resting a few inches away from your body, palms up. Let the weight of your body sink into the mat. Breathe, relax your body. Maybe soften your eyes or close them. And let go of any tension in your body. out beyond ideas of right doing and wrong doing. There is a field. I'll meet you there. Rumi. And now just let go and rest in Shavasana. Allow your breath to deepen. Gently move your fingers, your toes. Begin moving your arms and legs. Stretch your arms up over your head and give yourself a full body stretch, stretching your arms, your legs, everything. And in your own time, slowly hug your knees to your chest. 
and make your way over to your right side, resting here for as long as you like. And in your own time, make your way up to a seated position. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste. And Winston joined us at the end. This is Winston. Thank you for practicing with me today. <laughs>